Hello, my name is Elijah Pia. I am an economist and a certified data scientist. Welcome to this lesson on microeconomics. We are going to consider an introduction to the study of economics. Economics originated from two Greek words, oikos, which means a house, and nemen, which also means to manage. Putting these Greek words together simply means to manage a house. We will liken the space in the house, which you need to manage, as the resource which is assumed to be limited. Thus, you need to manage this space so that you can possibly arrange every piece of furniture or item in the room. Therefore, in economics, we use the word allocation for that. Note that having to manage your house and positioning every item in your house so that you can move around comfortably the result is simply comfortability. So here we adopt the word satisfaction. Therefore, economics is the allocation of scarce resources to satisfy human wants. This is normally considered the general definition of economics. Now, you need to understand that several people known as economists contributed to the development of this discipline. Some of these economists are Adam Smith, Alfred Marshall, Lionel Robbins, Paul Samuelson, among others. And we are going to consider their definitions of economics. So we start with the definition by Adam Smith. We want to categorize the definitions of economics in terms of wealth, welfare, and growth. Adam Smith, also known as the father of economics, defined economics as an inquiry into the nature and causes of the wealth of nations. This definition actually was the title of his book which he wrote in 1974. The lesson in this definition is that Adam Smith considered the acquisition of wealth as the main objective of human activity. However, wealth is only seen as a means to an end. And thus, Smith was seen to have failed to consider or capture human welfare in this definition. As a result, Alfred Marshall also defined economics as the study of mankind in the ordinary business of life. It examines that part of individual and social actions which is most closely connected with attainment and with the use of the material requisites of well-being. Marshall considered mankind's ordinary business of life, which is basically the economic aspect of human life, and also recognizes the fact that Individuals and society plays the role of using material things for their satisfaction. However, Alfred Marshall only considered the fact that material things are that which were capable of promoting welfare. Material things are those things that can be seen, felt, and touched. He failed to recognize the fact that some immaterial things, such as the services of a doctor or teacher, are also capable of promoting human welfare. It was there that we consider the definition by Lionel Robbins. He defined economics as a social science which studies human behavior as a relationship between ends and scarce means which have alternative uses. In his definition, he mentions the need to study human behavior since human behavior is dynamic. Ends are simply the goals, aims, and objectives that people want to achieve. Scarce means simply refers to the fact that resources are limited relative to the demand for them and the term alternative uses implies that resources can naturally be put to different uses. Robbins, however, made no distinction between ends which are good and ends which are bad. For example, it is well known that the consumption of rice promotes human welfare, but the consumption of cigarettes may be harmful to human beings. Later on, Robbins said that Economics is just neutral between ends. Note that Robin's definition is usually considered by many to be one of the most acceptable definitions of economics. One thing that the previous definitions have not considered so far is the issue of growth and development. So let us look at the definition given by Paul Samuelson. Paul Samuelson defines economics as the study of how men and society choose with or without the use of money to employ scarce productive resources which could have alternative uses to produce various commodities over time and distribute them for consumption now and in the future among various people and groups of society. 
when you consider Sam Wilson's definition of economics, you notice that this definition was made dynamic when he included the element of time and thereby covering or inferring the theory of economic growth, since economic growth mainly deals with changes or improvement over time. He stressed the problem of scarcity of means in relation to unlimited ones and that the means could be put to alternative uses. He also covers aspects of economic activities like production, distribution, and consumption. The scope of economics refers to the expanse of the field of study. Economics is considered as a science because it uses the scientific process to investigate the possibility of deducing generalizations as regards the economic motives of human beings. It is an art since it adopts practical approach to solving economic problems. The draw line between considering economics as a science or an art is that science teaches knowledge and art teaches practice. Again, the fact that economics literally focuses on human behavior as regards how resources are managed simply makes it a social science. In terms of the scope of economics as well, we need to also consider the fact that we can make the distinction between positive economics and normative economics. Positive economics simply deals with what is. Basically, we are talking about facts. So, for example, in the case of Ghana, a statement like unemployment rate is high among graduates in Ghana means that whoever makes such a statement is dealing with the realms of positive economics. Now, normative economics also deals with what should be or what ought to be. Basically, it has to do with subjective opinions. Like, for instance, um, if you try to uh, liken the situation of Ghana currently per the 2022 budget on the e-levy implementation, a statement like e-levy should be removed from the 2022 budget means that this is an issue of normative economics. There are two main branches of economics, microeconomics and macroeconomics. Microeconomics studies the single or individual unit in an economy. Examples are prices of goods and services, demand and supply, market structures, consumer theory where we try to look at utility concepts. The macroeconomics also studies the aggregate unit of an economy. And examples of issues in macroeconomics simply has to do with inflation, national income, unemployment, and others. So up to this point, I hope you now have an introduction to the study of economics and you understand what economics is all about. So in our next lesson, we are going to look at some fundamental concepts in economics that ranges from scarcity, choice, skill of preference, and opportunity cost.